So sometimes you're in places you don't even know how you got there. Be alert. Be sensitive. Because my whole life is built on how can I help somebody else? I forgot about mine a long time ago. I want to help you. And in that process, I found life. It seems like I lost my life to find life. And once I found the life, I wanted to give more and more of it away. That's everything. Everything I own, everything I do. This is what I have found is to be the most incredible, passionate thing one could have is helping others. Whoa, what a reward. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners, this success to me. Giving the best of me, my living legacy. What's going on guys? So glad you're tuning in to The Modern Man. This is a show where we try and address, discuss, and explore topics that are challenging men in today's society. In today's episode, we want to explore passion and the importance of living life with passion. The usual suspects joining me today, Tyler Harris, Charles Russ, and our, our special guest today, Dave Walton. Yeah, man. How are you doing? Wonderfully well. Glad, glad to be here with you guys. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. And before we kind of jump into all the content and, and talk about passion, why not introduce yourself a little bit and kind of uh, let people know who you are and what it is you do? Yeah, let me give a, a kind of a quick rundown on that. Uh, Dave Walton. A lot of folks knew me, you know, back in high school as Junior, Junior Walton. My father was a tremendous uh, athlete. He, uh, as a matter of fact, he's in the North and South Carolina Boxing Hall of Fame. Fought 62 fights, won 48, and uh, knocked his opponent out 28 times. I had a younger brother that uh, he was very passionate about baseball. He was an excellent football player, basketball player, but he chose to throw all the eggs in one basket in baseball. I remember getting up some mornings and watching him. He'd swing 500 times every day. He's only five foot seven. They didn't give him a chance. There was no way he was going to play pro ball. He fooled them all wrong. At the age of 17, uh, the, they were there and signed a big contract. He went away to play uh, professional baseball. I myself, I, I rose uh, a little bit, you know, I did a little bit of ath ath athleticism in me. I uh, became a two-time most valuable player as a high school quarterback, batting crown champion, blah, 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 and all that American Legion such. But I made some wrong turns in the road, and those wrong turns in the road cost me dearly. However, they taught me a valuable lesson, and other people surrounded me to teach me that your failures can be a springboard into passionate things to change your life. I listened to them carefully, and maybe we'll get to share some of those things today. Well, I'm excited to kind of jump jump right in. I told you he's got no passion. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I, I didn't sense any passion yeah. whatsoever. But I kind of throwing that out into the air. What is passion to you guys? Uh, to me, passion comes from doing what you were born to do. Um, so the times that I feel most passionate about what I'm doing is when I feel like I'm operating out of my gifts. Um, and I think that to me is a good starting point in this whole idea of um, chasing passion that to me it's about operating out of your gifts operating out of the things that God put in you the the things that you're supposed to be doing and you'll become passionate when you're when you're operating in those in those areas so that to me you know you can lose passion you can gain passion but as long as you're operating out of your gifts you're typically going to become passionate about what comes from that Charles what do you think about passion uh, I definitely I agree that it's from, it's from operating out of your gifts or figuring out what your gifts are. Um, and weirdly, weirdly, a lot of times your gifts, your gifts might not be what make you happy at first. Uh, you know, because you're, you're, you're taught, you're affected by other people, other things, by situations, things like that. And those things, you know, they make you think this is what you're supposed to do. Because this is what I see on TV. This is how I've been influenced. So you think that's what you're supposed to do, but when you really find what you're supposed to do, it's so natural. The, the flow is natural, the movement's natural, the feeling is natural. You know, all of a sudden you're like, man, everything is perfect and everything works and I like doing this and it makes me feel good when I do it, no matter the outcome. Um, so the, the whole idea about building passion is finding that. It's finding that and when you find it, the passion just pours out. You want to get up and do it. You want to go after it. You want to put in the extra hour. 
You want to put in more effort. Um, so when you find it, passion becomes easy. It's, it's, a natural, it's a natural byproduct of, of finding what you were meant to do and doing it. So you guys kind of touched on doing what you're meant to do, being born with it, natural design. Finding what you're good at and what's natural sometimes means going after failure, after failure, after failure. A lot of people watching this might not quite know what their passion is yet. Even Dave hearing your story mentioning your athleticism, yeah. making some wrong turns. How can you push through that failure and continue to chase that passion? Yeah, that's a great question because I needed help uh, when, when that uh, happened to me. And uh, so I'm, I'm a little church mouse. I went to the pastor and asked him. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he, was, he gave me great advice. He looked at me and said, I really don't know what to tell you as far as trying to d deliver what you need. But I'll say this to you. Go home and write five things down that you really and truly love doing. I mean, you, you know, and, and then what I want you to do is I want you to spend 30 days meditating, praying, thinking about this. And I think that within the 30 days, it'll rise to the top on what it is that you really want to do. Well, see, I, at one time I was a restaurant owner. I had 18 restaurants. And I was very passionate about it to serve uh, the best products that we could possibly serve. Uh, and uh, so I wrote that down. By the way, I was in the wilderness while I was doing this because I just stepped out of ministry and was in two years in the wilderness trying to seek what it is that I'm supposed to do. I'm in my 40s at that time. So I wrote it down. Maybe I go back into uh, restaurant business. Then, then uh, Spartanburg Regional uh, got in touch with me and said, we'd love to have you as a chaplain. We know about you, what you do. And, well, that was exciting because, you know, I'm thinking insurance and all the other things because I'm married. I, you know, I get pretty passionate about that. Anyway, I wrote these things down. I was a coach at one time, wrote them down. But the last thing that I wrote down, you know, I was really trying to dodge it, was evangelism because this is what I'd been doing. And I tell you, after 30 days, man, I don't know how to explain it, but there was a fire that rose up in me, and it was a flaming fire. It was like, let me give you an illustration. It's like you've got this fire, and you throw water on it to put it out, and the steam goes up. And that's what happened to me. Man, I was vaporized and covered with this just this incredible fire steam all over me. And I knew it. And I went and said to my pastor, I know what I'm supposed to do. I said, it's burning like fire in me. And, uh, well, I could tell you a whole lot more about that. But that's, that's what happened to me. And then uh, in 2003, I hit the road and the Lord began to open doors all over the world. And uh, that's, that's what I still do till today. Just hearing you describe that fire, do you think that's what happens when you try and extinguish your passion? No, I think it's a, it's a combination of uh, fire and water uh, that brought about the vaporization. And what, what happens is, you know, fire is hot, but when the vapor comes, it covers you totally. It consumes you. You become saturated in, in what you're doing. And that's exactly what's happened to me. I'm totally saturated in what I do. It is a driving purpose. It drives me totally day in and day out. I can't wait to get up. I can hardly go to sleep. It's on my mind. I'm jotting stuff down. And this is what I do because I'm in prisons. I speak to schools. I speak to football teams. I mean, I can't wait because I want to I help them. I mean, let me give you an illustration because I'm passionate about what I'm doing. So I'm speaking to a football team, and I've got no – they're a championship team. And when I finish, the most un unbelievable thing happens. The, the guy that caught my eyes is this big blonde guy. He's huge. And I notice he's crying. All the other athletes leave, and he comes and falls on me, Tyler. And I, I said, you okay, man? And he said, yes, sir. He said, I was getting ready to do something very horrible in this school today. He said, but I can't because of what you said. And I came to the Lord. Man, I felt God, like chills come all over me. And I didn't ask him what it was. I ate with him. I got ready to go, and he ran me all the way to where my car was, fell on me again. See, passion has a way of an, like a fiery arrow, and the, it strikes right to the center core of what somebody needs. You may not know it. You're only delivering the package that you have, that you've been through, and your failures, and how you've been able to make it. And all of a sudden, you're helping somebody else that's going through the same thing that you went through way back under, and it changed this young man's life. You see what I'm saying? 
But I think that the very beginning of what you just said, when he told you for 30 days to think and pray and meditate on it, I think the majority of people out there that are trying to figure out, like, what am I passionate about? Trying to figure out what are my gifts? Trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing? They give it, like, 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, they, and then they get frustrated after 30 minutes that they didn't figure it out, and they move on to the next thing, and, and they're in this constant state of, I don't know what to do, but they're not really trying to do anything. And you spent that 30 days trying to figure it out, and the, and the cream rose to the top, and, and it makes sense that you were so intensely focused and you figured it out when most people just aren't willing to put the work in to figure out what it is that they want to put the work in too. <laughs> it's not, I don't even know if it's willing. Um, we've created this society that we live in. We've created instantaneous gratification. We, we've done this as a society and that's what makes doing that hard. You know, we, we don't ever have to, when do we ever have an opportunity to unplug, be it you have to work because you need money coming in, or you just literally, you wanna know right now. I got the internet, I can Google it, I can figure it out. When you can't, when it's not, it's not like you even started, like I think one of the most important things you said is you started figuring this out in your 40s. You know, not me being older than them too, I'm not 40. And I, you know, and I, I'm still, I think, I think I know, but it could change, you know, you could, you could hit that drop, you could hit that, you come to that four-way stop and you always thought you were supposed to go straight and all of a sudden you, you get that urge to take a right and, and you take that right and it's the, the best thing that's ever happened. You know, all those, those things and, you know, changing my perception on things that have happened to me in my past, uh, like I was, I was talking to Ted about that earlier, like this, a change of perception on what's happened to me in my past that's allowed me to figure out which way I'm supposed to be going. Everything's not, it's not a nightmare that happens to you. There's a reason. It's, it's a guide, it's a turn, it's, it's a molding factor in learning what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, I, I've met people like a lady, when I was at church today, we had a guest pastor, she was 22. She's found hers early, you know, she found it. And you could tell, even listen to her, you could hear it. It's like, that's, that, that's it, that's your passion. So I think I know what mine is, but maybe 10 years from now I'm wrong and that's okay. You know, it's the, it's the search. Well, maybe yours right now. Yeah. And it's the search. The search is okay. There's nothing wrong with the search. You know, accept it. It's, it's part of it. There's a couple things I want to unpack with that. It kind of, listening to you, all you talk about sticking with it for 30 days, discovering your passion when you're 40. There's a lot of people also in instant gratification, social media, you're comparing your struggles to somebody else's success. Mm -hmm. And you could see somebody who's 22, somebody who's 30 and who has found their passion early in life and it's easy if you're either whether you're 18 to 45 50 plus and you haven't found your passion yet it's easy to compare yourself to that story and think well am i ever going to figure this out the biggest thing i kind of want to address is how important is patience in looking for your passion and secondly you already mentioned and addressed that passion can change what do you think it is that can instill that change in passion or instill the initial passion in the first place Patience, uh, don't, and, and you know, when you say patience, it's a great word, don't leave out effort, though. You need to put some effort into your search. Uh, you know, it, like one of my, my favorite little Bible verses is asking, asking you shall receive, but people leave out the seeking you shall find. You gotta go look, man. You gotta put some effort in to whatever it is, you gotta put effort in. Um, you gotta get your mind right, have your mind clear, be willing to accept things that aren't aren't your normal train of thought, but you also have to actively look, man. You have to put effort. When something new comes in, don't just say, uh, like, maybe you need to put some effort, put some time into that, look into that, see how that feels, see what, how that works for you. Because the thing that you may think, uh, it's not for me, that might be it. And you just keep shunning it because it doesn't, it doesn't fit in your little casual walk that you're on. Um, so, you know, I would just say, don't, don't be afraid to explore and don't be in a rush, that's the patience because you explore this and it doesn't work, that's okay, it's okay. But put the effort in to figure it out. And if it doesn't work, then you're on to the next one, you're on to the next signal, you're on to the next clue. And eventually you're gonna hit the one. And that effort's all gonna pay off. And don't think, oh, well I just spent this three or four days after this and figured it out. No, it was those hundreds of days you spent checking things off, crossing this off, this isn't it, this isn't it, this isn't it, this isn't it, 
and then you get to it. You know, don't 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 negate that. That's all part of the part of the journey. That's all part of discovering your passion. And it also makes that passion, finding it and locking in on it so much more rewarding. You know, I know we all have those things like, man, I was remember when I was doing this and this and I tried this and this wasn't working and this didn't happen. That's what makes being successful, however you define that, rewarding. If it was instantly, if it was that instant gratification we talked about, it's not, it's not even rewarding. It's just a thing. It's just, oh, it just happened. It wasn't, it's not a big deal, you know? Um, it's funny when you talk about sports, that's it's the instant thing I think of about the really talented kid, the really fast, really strong kid that's better than everybody until about halfway through high school. And everybody else starts catching up. The kids that are working out harder start passing you. And in his head, this kid does not understand anymore because he never had to do it. It's the same thought process. We all know that kid. Man, if he would have just worked a little harder, he would have been the guy. But Go back to when he was six. Nobody could touch him. Even up to probably when he was 13. Nobody could touch him. But all of a sudden they catch up and it's very hard to reprogram that clock and get that kid to start working. It's that instant gratification. He's always had it. So it's, I feel like it's learning about that. I love how you said it's the journey. And we talk about patience. There's this idea of, you know, we think, we think about that term means to an end. And it's like, what if the means are the end? It's like, what if the entire journey is trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing in life? And not looking at it as with such short-term vision and like, in 2019, I will figure out what I'm supposed to do with my life. (laughs) But figure out that like, what if life is figuring out what you're supposed to do with your life? And understanding that if you get it when you're 70 or if you get it when you're 27, that you got it. (laughs) And And that's what it's all about. And it's having the patience of understanding that it may take one person their entire lifetime to get to it, but that doesn't make them any worse or any better than the person that got it when they were, like you were saying, 22 uh, and figured it out as long as you figured it out. Uh, But it was the process along the way that I think that's everybody's, that's what makes life so interesting. That's that's everybody's journey, everybody's story um, is how they got there. Um, So I'm, I'm fascinated by that because I don't, I don't know that any of us can sit here, I mean, and say that we know what we're gonna be doing in five years. We know what we're gonna be doing in in 10 years or know what we're gonna be doing on Wednesday. (laughs) You know, I mean, so much can change so quickly. Uh, But I think if, if you're, if you have the mindset of being patient and being always in search of, it's like, am I currently searching for what I'm supposed to be doing? Even when you feel like you're already in it, making sure like, is this moment, like, I'm sure, Dave, you've had mornings where you're like, you felt, you have felt led to do something, but you're like, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Like, wh- why do I have to go do that? But you went and did it anyways. And so always making sure that even when you feel like you are doing what you're supposed to be doing is in that moment the right, the right thing. Um, so I think that's, that's life. I mean, it's literally the definition of life. Well, let me, let me be a little carry a little bit more openness with you. Uh, You know, when I was an athlete, I was very passionate about being the athlete. Now I learned that from the training of of my my daddy because he was very passionate about what he did and that's the training I received. But I gotta tell you this, a lot of times, and I was passionate, but I got involved in some things that I shouldn't been involved and it stole the passion and destroyed my life. And I went out with two All-Americans, uh, and I was, you know, I was a young kid, and I was green behind the ears, and they, they liked me. And so I went with them, and I got introduced to alcohol. And I never had a drink in my life. I was an 11th grader. And um, j- to be accepted, I, I took a drink. Now, I'm going to discover at this moment I have a passion of sports, but all of a sudden I developed a passion of alcohol. One or the other is gonna take over. No man can serve two masters, there's just no way. And the alcohol became a master to my life. And I lost 10 years of my life to alcoholism. I married my high school sweetheart thinking that that would maybe change me. I worsened. So well, let's have a baby. Maybe that'll make me better. 
but it didn't. I worsened. And I reached into my rope in 10 years and was ready to take my life. So it gives you an idea uh, of, of, of where I've been. Therefore, when one man, now this is one man, by then uh, I had paid my way through college. My wife helped me. I had become a club manager of a weightlifting uh, uh, Regency Health Spa. That was a real passionate thing about my life and physical fitness and that kind of thing. One man came in one day and he said, oh gosh, you're a, you're Junior Walton. And I said, well, ain't her, yeah, I am. Hey, how would you know me? Oh, I watched you play ball. We played all of our ball at Walford College in, uh, in their stadium. And uh, so, you know, he, he won me over. Listen to this. This is what it took to change my life. I didn't know it, but this man took an old football picture, went to a secondary bedroom, pinned it up on a wall, told his wife, leave me alone, don't bother me, I'll be in here in this room, and he locked the door and stayed in there for 30 days fasting and praying over me because he felt like that I had potential. He felt like there was, that I had lost my way and he was trying to help me find it back. You know what I learned? That's a valuable lesson. Helping others will also help you develop the passion that you really need and what you're looking for. His wife, after he died, his wife came to me because I didn't know none of this. And she said, I almost had to leave my own home. I said, well, how come? Well, if you could have heard my husband night after night after night, day after day, crying, howling, screaming, crying over you. And she said it changed his life, changed her life, and it eventually changed my life. Boy, that's a kind of a passion, isn't it? Let's help others. Yeah. And I think in helping others, we'll find exactly where we're going to blend in with what we need to do. That's amazing because you almost think of someone else's passion was what drove your passion. Sure did what kind of instilled that. I do want to address one man can't serve two masters. How important is it to defend your passion against distractions? Because as you mentioned, there's some days you're being drawn to something you don't really want to do. And those distractions that don't serve your passion, they're always there and they're always knocking on the door. How can you defend yourself from that? That's a great question. <laughs> he looked over here. That's a great question. And Tyler, he should, or Tyler or Charles, you should answer. Well, that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll bring it back. Uh, first, first and foremost, make your passion known. Don't hide it. Don't be afraid of it. Make it known to other people. Because one thing I've always, I've, I'm very adamant about when you choose friends. You know, Ted, we talk about a lot, a lot about auditing your circle of people that you're with, and everybody's not for you. If someone knows your passion and they're pushing you away from it instant signal but if I don't know your passion and I'm saying hey let's do this and it's going totally against everything you want to do but I have no clue you want to do it is that really my fault so but make it known make it known to everyone hey man I love this this is what I want to do this has got my heart on fire it it wakes me up in the morning let them know and you'll be also you'll be surprised about how many people are drawn to you which is just gonna, it, it's gonna fuel that fire. It's throwing logs on the fire, constantly, constantly, constantly. And you see it makes me smile because it, it gets me excited. Let people know, let them know, man. And if they're not for it, they're not for it. Everybody's not gonna ride the bus with you. And that's okay, that's, that's okay. I don't want everybody. I want those that, that I can help. I, I want those that, that I can motivate. I want those that motivate me. And if it's not for you, that's okay. That doesn't mean either one of us is wrong. It's just not for you right now. So that's step one. And you know, you know, we've been talking about, we've been talking about being tangible. We have me and Ted have a lot of discussions about, you know, that that motivation, those motivational talks. You get all excited, but how long does it last? Maybe till you go to sleep. Maybe if you're lucky. So if it's noon, and you went to that motivational lunch. If you're still motivated when you go to bed, you lucky because <laughs> it, it dies. Yeah, that was a good one. So that's a tangible first step, man. Yeah. If you think you know what your passion is, let everybody know about it. Don't be scared to tell them about it. Don't be scared to talk about it. Uh, you can't hide your passion. Man, that's a home run right there. I'm telling you, that's, that's good stuff. So there's, there's step one. There's step one. You get that. that, that that's it. Let them know. Well, mm. with that, then, kind of wrapping this up towards the end, let the passion know what, what are all your passions. 
as of right now, because as we discussed, they can change. We're always looking for them. We'll, we'll throw that disclaimer out there. Yeah. But what you're feeling, and I'll go first in terms of passions. The first time me and you sat down, we talked about the modern man yeah. and what it could be. And you kind of gave me the green light to move forward with it. Yeah. And I thank you for that sure. because it's almost your passion to share stories instilled my passion to really want to talk to men out there about issues and discussions and I almost feel as if my purpose in life and I'm saying this out loud more because it scares me to say it out loud over and over is to be a beacon and help usher in a new generation of men and that's scary because if I'm going to talk that talk I have to walk that walk I have to mm. be an example and being a man is not easy so with that being said what I hope to do in my lifetime is inspire men to be better better fathers, better husbands, better men all around to build a better world. You just stapled accountability to your forehead. That was awesome. That's huge. I, I'm, I'm very similar to you. Uh, I don't exclude all the other, um, you know, human beings, so women as well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, my big passion right now is just putting so much out there because I feel this intense responsibility that, you know, some mentors came into my life four and a half years ago and changed the course of the rest of my life. And, and to pay that forward and to be that for someone to, a, to even a small, small degree has become what gets me up in the morning to know that someone right now that's listening to this is listening to it because they were scrolling on Instagram or they were scrolling on Facebook, you know, randomly throughout their day. And they happened to just pause when it came to this little thumbnail that came across. And now they're watching this or now they're listening to this and they're in Minnesota and they have no idea why, but they just listened to all that we had to say and something will spark something inside them for them to figure out what they're passionate about. And a message will come six months from now or never, but something will come out of it in their life and their life will be forever changed, um, hopefully from the messages that we're putting out. Like to me, I just know that my voice is the only voice that can penetrate that one person. Not because of anything being special about me, but just because of my context and what I've been through happens to fit kind of what they've been through and that Les Brown could say it, Tony Robbins could say it, Dave could say it, but for whatever reason that they're only going to hear it from me. And I just feel an intense responsibility to keep putting stuff out there, um, even if it's just for that one person. Um, and so that's what I've chosen to do is just document as much as I possibly can of my life in hopes that others will be impacted from it. Um, and it's just every day more and more and more and more. We call it scaling impact. Um, trying to scale that impact and scale the amount of people that we can reach in that way. And, um, and I think that to me, it will be a life well lived. Wow. Let me, let me share this with you that uh, in 1975, when I was the, uh, I was sitting on a church pew, third row back, alcohol all over me. This man had invited me to church. I hated church. I hated church people. I'd spit in their face. I hated everybody. I hated me. Why should I like any of them? And I'm sitting there listening to this guy talk, and all of a sudden it's like my whole life came before me, and I saw this, this incredible, worthless, no-account individual, me. And um, long story short, I came to know uh, Jesus. Now, 75, and let's rush it up to today. So I wake up this morning, and I'm saying, I, I, I need some assignments today of somebody hurting, somebody I can maybe help, because I'm always looking to help somebody some way, somehow. And have, give me eyes to see what I can't see, ears to hear what I can't hear. And I'm, I'm heading up to Bavard, and I just, all of a sudden, my car just pulls into a Sphinx. Well, I get out, and I go in. I say, well, I, I look around, and I, I feel something. It's that fire. It's like it just it, it, it ignited on me. And I, I looked around, and I said, well, I don't see nothing. And so I, I, uh, I got a energy drink, and I went over, and three girls standing there, and I, I paid for it. Oh. Can I, can I have 30 seconds of your time? And they said, yeah, and I started. 
quickly somebody was called away. The second one was called away. The third one stayed. And I continued to 30 seconds, finished up, paid her, gave my story, got ready to walk out. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. How did I get what you just said? So sometimes you're in places you don't even know how you got there. Be alert, be sensitive, because my whole life is built on how can I help somebody else? I forgot about mine a long time ago. I want to help you. And in that process, I found life. It seems like I lost my life to find life. And once I found the life, I wanted to give more and more of it away. That's everything. Everything I own, everything I do. And I have found that life. So I stood there at the cash register, prayed a little simple prayer with the girl, tears running down her face. I went out and got my book called uh, The Relentless Journey, signed one over for her, and gave it to her. I know I don't look like an author, but, but I've written a couple books. Uh, they're, they're like first graders, like first grade book. You know what I'm saying? Look at the picture, read it and all. But I'm just telling you, that this is what I have found is to be the most incredible, passionate thing one could have is helping others. Whoa, what a reward. I love that. That's awesome. Charles? Well, everything, uh, everything like I do is actually uh, personal improvement. I mean, my main things, I'm a financial advisor, I own a gym and I'm a personal trainer. It's all personal improvement. Um, but what I found out through both, it's the same thing. If you come to me and you're in debt, I can give you a debt reduction plan. You follow it. But what happens a year later? You're back in debt. You come to me and you're overweight. I can give you an eight-week diet plan. You follow it, you lose the weight. What happens one year after? You're overweight again. So my thing is, I feel like my personal thing is to help you live your best life, to be the best version of you, whatever that, whatever that is. But to do that, I have to change your mind. It's not physical, it's not monetary. It's me changing your mind, changing your perception, helping you instill habits in yourself that will make you who you want to be, not who I want you to be, not who I think you should be, not who I think you could be, that are going to make you be who you want to be. And that's, that's what I'm finding, and this has been a, over the past probably 24, 36 months that it's really come to fruition that that's, that's who I want to be. I want to be the person that can change your mind for the rest of your life and help you get to the place you want to be. Hey, Ted, do you mind if I call an audible real quick? Go ahead. <laughs> so I love Dave, and I think it's very interesting for the people, especially that are watching. And if you talk about a modern man, I don't think Dave is like the picture of what they think of, right? I mean, it's just called it is what it is. But Dave is, to me, like the definition of a modern man. Because if you, if, if you guys just, you know, just getting to know Dave, but Dave's on social media all the time. He's doing Facebook Live. He's commenting on people on social media. He's like, he is one that has gone all in in helping others and has gone all in where all the others are. Yeah. Like if they're on Instagram, Dave's on Instagram. If they're on Facebook, Dave's on, on Facebook. And so I think it'd be interesting for Dave to give his definition of what a modern man is, since that's what the show's all about. So what's a modern man? Yeah, cause I was thinking a bit about that because, you know, being an old fogey like me, you know, I'm knocking on 72 now. And then I got to thinking about the modern man. I went, mm, man, modern man. <laughs> you know, uh, to me, if you're modern, whatever you do, be all in. Don't hesitate. It's time to leap and jump in and saturate yourself in whatever it is. I love the way you talk. Because to me, this modern man is going to, he's going to have to do Romans 12, 1 and 2. He's going to have to become one who does not camouflage. He's the real, he's the real, real person that you see. There's no camouflage. And he's become transformed by the renewing of his mind. Because my mind was chaotic. My mind was destroyed. And as I renewed my mind each day and it began to blossom and I began to learn and I made application to the truth 
and I let the truth overrun even obstacles that I thought were real and true and right, and they weren't. And I had to discard. And like you were saying, distracted. I've been distracted many times. But one thing sports teaches you as a quarterback, don't get distracted. Don't, don't listen to the crowd. Don't listen to the yells. Pay no attention. Focus in on where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish. To the modern man, he's got to do the same thing. It's all about focus, determination, and you cannot leave out hard work. It takes work to get anything done. I don't care who you are. I don't even know how to wrap this up. My homework assignment to you right now is push the rewind button and watch this again, because there's, there's so much value in the past 34 minutes that you have to absorb it once again. The day you plant the tree, is not the day you eat the fruit. Work on your passion, water that plant, help others. I just, I love everything that just happened right now and I just wanna kinda stop talking and let that resonate. Be a modern man. <laughs>